Welcome to the Align Life Podcast by yours truly, Dr. Tiffany. How about we get out that magnifying glass and look at every part of your life, the awesome, the suck, and everything in between. There's so much beauty in you. Stop being afraid of what isn't good enough and let's double down on what is together. It's about your truth and your life aligned. Hey friends, today we have Sarah Newgard, powerhouse girl boss is all I have to say. We could have talked for hours, but um, in this 45 minute little um, superficial chat, just kidding, nothing with us two is superficial. It's pretty much right down to the core of who she is and what makes her tick and how she stays high energy and high vibe. We talked about growth mindset the whole time, and she's going to give you tactics on how to do that. What are some things she does to change her state when she feels like it's off, but more importantly, how does she stay believing in herself, continuing to create that crystal clear vision so that her choices become easier and they become totally aligned with who she is. This This episode is all about grit. One thing she says is don't hesitate and never forget to take action. Always take action. Where you are is part of the journey. The destination doesn't matter. Do the work. And even if the work is messy and brutal and not very appealing, that's where the lessons are. The lessons are in the failures, the mess ups, the fall flat on your face. That's where you build confidence. That's where you build certainty. That's where you have more courage. So enjoy her. Get a glimpse into her energy, guys. It is powerful. And I've known her for 25 years now. It has always been this way to some degree. She chose high energy and high vibe from the time she was 15, 13, the first time I met her on the basketball court, she's carried that through. That's her defining personality trait. That wasn't just so. She created it and she does it and is consistent and disciplined with who she wants to be every single day. So enjoy this. Enjoy her. Follow her. She is a leader you want to follow. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have a powerhouse, Sarah Newgard. Hi, Sarah. Oh, hello. <laughs> so good to be here. This is so awesome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So we go way back. We were just I was talking just about gonna say, we go way back. Well, seventh and eighth grade basketball, Devils Lake, Edmore, Prairie Rose tournaments. Oh my gosh. I mean, like before you said that, I wouldn't even remember Prairie Rose tournaments. Our, my dad coached us. Like, oh, we got glory days. We you have know, glory days. I, um, I did amateur basketball up until like three years ago. It just wasn't quite the same lady. <laughs> have, have I retired played? about five years ago because oh. it definitely is not the same. <laughs> oh. I'm like, whoa, this is not my girl parts. Like nothing, nothing goes the the right direction anymore. So we're going to just hang up these laces and hold it good. And now we can do comfortable podcasts and not uh, risk injury. (laughs) Totally. Okay. So we're going to, we talked a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff before we press record. Um, I should have pressed record earlier because that like that small, small chat is like so smart <laughs> we're smart it's always gold before the recording is on <laughs> isn't that true okay so how i initially started or thought of you actually um was really how you look on the outside is loud right we just talked about you being loud you're powerful you're a leader you're um you have a spin place, you are a leader in isogenics, all the things, right? But I really want to just get down to a little bit more of who you are because we have all these titles and when we're outside of our house, we act a certain way and we lead a certain way and you're based on partnership, correct me if I'm wrong, partnership is what you, one of your main tools that has gotten you to where you 
want to go, right? Partnership with your family, partnership with Isogenics and all of the people that have created your circle of influence. So, but I want to like peel back the surface because like that's pretty boring and, <laughs> and you haven't even talked yet and you just keep nodding. You're like, come on, Tiff, get to the freaking no, point. No. I, I understand <laughs> you like completely right now. I totally get it. Totally. So um, we were just talking before we started about your how you're seen in the community. You are loud, you're intense. Um, I want to talk about if you've always been that way and the evolution of getting there and being okay with this is Sarah, this is Chip, this is what we do. And um, in the meantime, I imagine we'll touch on your circle of influence, we'll touch on your family, we'll touch on values of exercise and health and all those kind of things. But can you just first talk about like, let's just go right there. <laughs> yes. Evolution. Yes. Well, and you know, I would say, I mean, I've always been a pretty high energy person just growing up. That's just how I was and was always, um, I guess felt pretty alive. Mm -hmm. And as, as you, you know, you go and you get into school and, you know, previous jobs I've had, you know, you can find where you or I did where I thrived and where I didn't thrive. And as you evolve and mature and learn more about yourself, you can, you just, it just becomes more clear the environments that you thrive in. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I worked for, before starting my businesses, I worked for several, many years in the corporate world per se. And there were different jobs where I was able to thrive just off of, cause I am a super passionate person. Like mm -hmm. anybody that knows like what's important to me, I'm super passionate about. And I, and I held certain positions to where that part of my personality was being stifled and therefore my energy shifted. My mindset started to shift because I was not aligned with, who I was in, in that position. And I remember the day where, you know, cause I'm just like, well, is this what it is? Like, is this what you have to sacrifice in order to, you know, have the job and, you know, get your insurance and da, 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 da. Oh, God, it's just like, oh, ah. Ah. like, I am so not meant for the eight to five. It's just, oh. it's so, uh, maddening to me like I think about it in my my skin crawls but I thought that's what you did I thought that's the way that it had to be because that's what everybody says and what um you know society tends to push you towards and I remember sitting there at my desk and I was at a bank at the time okay doing marketing at a bank well <laughs> that environment in itself I should have no. ran and ran fast and like fast. you had to wear quote slacks and nice shoes what, what yeah. were you thinking I know. and I remember I just I, I I was sitting there at the desk and I at my desk and I'm like is this what it is like is this my life so I'm going to wait for the weekends how on earth am I ever going to be able to do everything that I want to do with this plus my my energy was flat I, I could just feel like i wasn't myself and i and i took out a piece of paper and on one side i wrote what i was passionate about i like legit had a blank piece of paper and it's like what am i most passionate about and i made my list and i made also made a list right beside it i drew drew a line right down the center of the paper and on the other side it was like what am i currently doing and then i looked at those two lists and it was like they did not match like uh -huh. at all and so it was time for a change That's awesome. because i thought I am not going to do this and settle for this for the rest of my life. And when it was time to make a change, it's like, you know, everybody thinks like, oh, you know what you're, you know what, you must really know what you're doing. It's like, oh gosh, right. <laughs> no, I just have the courage to see if it's worth it. 
Right. The courage. That's what it is. And the grit and the vision to do something different. And then that's when I started my personal training business and it's evolved into our isogenics business. And we opened a spin studio. And because when I looked at my list, like what am I most passionate about? It was relationships with people, my family, traveling freedom of schedule was a big big thing to me Mm -hmm. freedom of schedule and it was like it was my mom's birthday yesterday and i was gone all day at the farm and that is like my vision like how am i going to be able to spend time with my family or be at my nieces and nephews games at middle of the afternoon 80 miles out of town i'm at the game yep And so when you keep your vision strong, it pushes you through those times. And I'm like, how can I create a life around these things that I'm passionate about and have, quite frankly, the guts to go for it? Totally. Well, because that's That's what they say, right? It's like, oh, I wish I had the confidence that you have. Well, confidence is totally Comes from failing. Exactly. Over and over and over and over and crying and falling down and getting back up. And that's where it comes from. It's not, and I just think such a big thing is the belief. I just think like 90, I don't know, 95% of our happiness in our life comes from our neck up and what your mindset is and your belief that you can do it like whether it's with your health or you want to do a business or you want to change jobs or you want to go after something well you got to believe you can do it even before you believe you can do it (laughs) absolutely and you got to be willing to i think about the you know there's so much stigma on well what you just talked about the eight to five job this is how you need to do it you got to figure out that maybe going against the minnows is going to be worth it, right? No matter what. And I believe that's where the confidence comes from. So you do it one time and you fall flat on your face and people laugh at you and people point at you and people say, see, I knew you couldn't do it. And you get back up and you're like, screw you. Like now you freaking watch this fierce badass because, because I'm going. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Cause and at this point, point I have nothing else to lose. I have full acceptance of myself. I can do whatever the hell I want, right? As soon as you change your mind, but it takes practice like over and over. I, do you think if you stop doing things that went out of your comfort zone or you stop doing things that you had to evolve or change or expand, um, would you forget how to do it? Would you forget how to like you know how to actually keep failing if you didn't ever do it anymore yeah you wouldn't know no and then you'd settle totally like mediocrity is just the curse of all things yes and that to me is just suffocating the settling and i'll keep can i'll keep trying and failing before i just throw in the hat because then guess where i'll be in slacks at a, I mean, anybody that knows me well, it's like, if I would do a job interview now, I'd show up in an exercise outfit and they'd be like, this isn't going to work. And I'd be like, oh, oh, you're right. right. It's not. Cause <laughs> if I can't wear my tennis shoes, this is not going to work, you know? So it's like, if I, then that's where you, but then that's back into the comfort zone. I mean, now that's not comfortable to me, but when you first start on your journey, it's easy to slip back into like, oh, that was just comfortable and the paycheck was steady and I have insurance and, but I was so unhappy. Totally. You know? Okay, let's uh, just talk about, I want you, I want you to talk about what you do for, when we um, get very aligned with who we are and our purpose and our mission and our passions, it takes very conscious decisions to be our best every day. Now, I know it doesn't always work that way, but um, I think that's one of the differences between the people who are living an aligned life totally is that, is that like that. Uh, 
So can you talk about, most people once again don't have the courage to even go there. Can you talk about that journey of where you've had to be in your mindset and in the people around you to actually continue to grow and expand the way you know you need to based on the vision that you just were talking about? Yes. And you know, like I didn't understand probably three or four years ago, what personal growth even was. I didn't even know what that was. I didn't even know the term and I was exposed to it. And I started reading different books and I, and that was my first step towards shifting my mindset is what I was putting into my mind. I read and I read a lot. I'm always in the middle of several books. <laughs> Me too. They call us ADHD. <laughs> I know. And it's like, this one's a little bit about this. This one's a little bit about this. This one's a little bit about this, but that was probably my first conscious decision on working on my mindset. Mm -hmm. And then I began to realize that it's all a choice. You know, because I get told a lot like, oh my gosh, you have, you know, why you have so much energy. Like I wish you had energy. And it's like, that's a choice. I mean, granted, like I'm, you know, for the most part, try to make healthy decisions with fueling my body. That's like a whole nother topic on keeping your energy high, but I choose. And that's something that in the morning, I set that intention. I set my intentions in the morning and I say them out loud and I do it every day single day, five things I'm grateful for. And I set my intentions for the day and it's, I trained it. It's a habit. As soon as my alarm goes off, that's the first thing I do is five things I'm grateful for. And then my intentions and like one of my intentions today was for this podcast to bring value and to be like my best for you. Cause we've been friends for so long. So that was one of my intentions was like, show up like be your best for Tiff on the podcast. Aww. And that's like an, uh, conscious choice because it's like, I like every, and my intention every day, every day I say it, it's like high energy. Bye bye. Every day. Instead of like, well, what do I got to do today? Yeah. Mm, oh oh shit. It's Monday. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's like, you get to choose and, and then tying in with that, like what you said about like who you're around, you start to realize that when you have these intentions, let's say, let's say it's to have high energy or to vibe high for the day. It goes directly against your intention to surround yourself with uh, low vibing Debbie Downers, mm -hmm. because how am I going to show up for you? at a high level if if right before this podcast i'm with people that are complaining about it's too muggy today it's too hot i don't like the weather um so and so's being a jerk uh whatever i don't there's a million things that people complain about and i complain about stuff sometimes too but i've trained myself to catch myself immediately and i stop doing it train yourself you train yourself you train yourself and then that immediately lends itself to your, the people that you surround yourself with because you're holding yourself to a higher standard with, with how you're going to maintain your mindset. And, and that, you know, you read these books or you listen to these podcasts and everybody thinks like, I could never do that because how, how would I do that tomorrow or something? Mm -hmm. Well, no, it doesn't happen overnight for Christ's sakes. This is like three freaking years in the making. Right, right. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens small changes daily. That's what leads to big things. But like people just think that it has to be immediate and then they just don't do it at all. Well, that's a farce. Totally. So one of the questions I asked in my The Align Life membership um, was, are you more interested in disappointing other people or yourself? And it's a, it's a Glennon Doyle. I, I think it's maybe from her last book, the untamed. Have you read that by the way? No, okay. but I need to. Yeah. I, I've heard, um, well, you don't need to. <laughs> I, could. 
I mean, I could. Because, because you and I have seven books started, maybe when you finish one, you can add it. Or I have like 50 to 100 that I haven't read, um, but I keep buying them. So, you know, it's one of my addictions. <laughs> you got to start finishing some of these. I might have a leg up on you on that one. Totally. I just cleaned out my closet, so my percentage isn't that bad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> good job tip i'm gonna check in on you on your book completion you. Rate. no kidding okay but anyway that question rocked people because they never thought of it every single person that i've talked to and that has answered it guess what they said they're more interested in disappointing other people versus themselves first and so got me thinking like what would happen in your life? I mean, remember, it's our life. Why would we be so interested in everyone else before ourselves, right? right. But what would actually happen if we would be more interested in disappointing ourselves versus person A, B, C, D that I don't really care about? Right. Well, you'd work on yourself. Totally. You would put that as number one, right? You'd put courage in the front seat and confidence in the front seat and self-love and belief and mindset and training all these things that you live in now right that's how you show up is because you created it it didn't just happen right and what's interesting about that question that you asked in my mind now this this would be different than it was three years ago mm -hmm. that question I wouldn't even think about something like that because why would you be focused on the disappointments? Truth. So when you said that, I was like, I don't know because I don't think about disappointments that, I mean, it happens, but like my about focus, what you're right. Focused. So like you want to focus on, I'm a big believer in the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. What you focus on expands. So, but, but three years ago, I would have answered and, or, you know, probably four years ago or whatever, like you'd be more worried about disappointing other people than yourself. And then when you work on yourself, you don't maybe, you don't think about it in that lens. Totally. I don't know. That's kind I of my it. worn off topic there, but. No, that's good. No, I love it. Cause I, well, which is all about perspective. It, you can take whatever road you want. Yeah. Focus, focus on is where you're going. Totally. So be and careful. You know, I mean, I just think not enough people, well, I know not enough people do. Like, wake up and just think like, I got this. Yeah. I am strong. Like, I can do this. Like, I can have a good workout today. Or I can make healthy choices. Or I can have a positive attitude. Like there's just that, like, I just think there's such a disconnect with people feeling that way and thinking that way. And actually just that little time in the morning where you can have that little moment to yourself where you're like, I got this. I mean, I advise people to put sticky notes all over. Like you should see our house. We have sticky notes all over. Mm -hmm. I have my goals all over. I have them where I can see them. My bathroom mirror has um, dry erase marker all over it with all of my intentions, my different questions that I need to ask myself. And like oh, that's yeah. where things have really shifted. That's what I was going to, my next question was going to be in the, the team that you guide. 3,500 of them, mm -hmm. how do you lead them into this mindset? How do you give them a step-by-step -step or, you know, like, how are you the light that they can actually follow so they can create it for themselves? Right. And that's like been probably one of the things that I'm most grateful for is that I can pay this forward to mm -hmm. people because I didn't understand it and I didn't have the right people in my life to, and oh my gosh, like I have so much to learn. Like, and I'm always very transparent about that with our team. I'm like, I'm on my learning journey as well, but here are the things I have learned. And it always comes from like, I recommend 
books that I think would fit to where they're at. You know, we've got a lifestyle page that I drip in mindset stuff all the time with like, here's my morning routine, or, you know, we do lots of activities in there where maybe you do, you know, 20 burpees and list three things that you're grateful for. Like I drip heavy with the mindset because, and I talk about it and share and share my experience and pay it forward to try to provide some sort of value with that. And it's nothing fancy. I don't follow some big process, but it's just a ma matter of having those conversations. And like with our team, you know, we do team calls and, and every Sunday I try to bring some of that into our team calls. Like, yes, we're all running our businesses and, you know, there's the X, Y, Z of that. But so much about running your own business and having success comes from the mindset. Yeah, absolutely. And it comes from, I mean, I think what you just said, it's not, it's not anything specific and it's not a big plan, but it is consistency and discipline. And it's what you've talked about the whole time now. I've been on the phone with you for 45 minutes and that's what you've talked about. I don't know if you know that, <laughs> but that overriding anchor of yours is consistency in everything you do, everything you think, everything that you act on, right? And being disciplined enough to do it, to know that your vision is waiting, right? Your, your, this is your purpose, so just take that first step. And that's how you start to believe you can do it, as long as you take the first step. Action. It always comes down to action. Consistent oh. action. That's like, oh, I just preach that because it doesn't matter if it's with your business, with your health, with like consistently go for a 15 minute walk twice a week, you know, do that consistently for three weeks. Then maybe it's a 20 minute walk. You know, everybody thinks it has to be these big things or with your business, it's just small, consistent actions, you know? Totally. A lot of people just get, um, um, stuck or like they think it needs to be this big thing oh I, I know i i can give this example of um last month we were talking about awareness because everything comes down to i mean the foundation of everything number one is awareness and then in values like what you stand for because that's how you take action that's aligned to your thoughts beliefs actions and values right so we were talking about journaling and I went back to my, like one of the things that I learned was it's, it's about consistent action way more than it's about figuring out the whole system. So you read this book on, let's just say meditation and they say, well, it's recommended or you gotta follow this plan. It's an hour and a half every other day. I would be like, no, like that oh. can't fit into my life. So what happens is we get so stuck in this box of rules and we think about how we're gonna do it, and we think about how we're gonna meditate, we think about how we're gonna journal, we think about how we're gonna take action, and, and then we're all done thinking, and we still didn't do a damn thing. And yes. if we can go into the mindset of change is easy, but thinking about change is really hard, uh, truly, we could just continue to think about change. <laughs> yes. No action, it is hard. It is depleting of energy, right? It is so hard. And one of the little um, mantras per se that I've been following lately is don't hesitate. Mm, I love that. Don't hesitate. Like, don't hesitate. When you're thinking, do it. Because the second that you hesitate, that's where it gets all jumbled up in your head. And then you don't do anything and then you're down the rabbit hole. And I would say hesitate, um, not hesitating, doing is instinct, right? So hesitation is straight up left brain, ego, not good enough, right? Would you agree? Oh yeah. I would say, well, it could be a lot of things, but yeah, that would be <laughs> part of it. <laughs> I just think when you have that mindset of don't hesitate, you are living a life in more innate, more instinctual, more heart space, you're connected to your gut. Um, 
because you don't have that left brain just chattering. Well, and people think that like, it needs to be perfect. Like you just need to show up. <laughs> like that's all it is. That is all that it is. And one a, a mentor of mine, I remember, you know, I, this is probably five years ago. I don't know. And I just was, oh, just talking, 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 you know? And she's <laughs> like, you just got to show up. And who you are is like going to be good enough. And even if it's a big bust, right? Like you just have to show up. And, you know, I was having a conversation with a girl yesterday and the growth that I've experienced in my life and like starting businesses and whatever, the growth has come from the stuff that has sucked. I not the, not the good stuff, not the stuff that, um, uh, goes well I mean those are all victories that need to be you know like like what's the saying they see the glory and not the story it's like I remember when we opened our spin studio and I told this to a person one time like we my husband and I renovated that ourselves which <laughs> looking back it's like we did not know what we were doing the whole thing we didn't we had no business opening we didn't know what we were doing but we had a vision and so I remember just painting and crying and like, is anybody going to come? And I'm crying and I'm like, they'll come. And I kept saying over and over and over, the right people will come. The right people will come. And, and it was so hard and so uncomfortable and so much growth. And, but we just kept going and kept showing up. And then we got, we opened. And the right people came. And, and I said, and they're like, you cried before you were opening this up. I'm like every day for five months painting, thinking, what am I doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? And I wanted to like turn around so many times. And then like we have class, I mean, we're closed for COVID. So we do pop up outdoor classes, but I look at the people and I'm like, what if we would have turned around the best oh, people totally. in their life? What if I would have like not had the grit to keep going? And everybody thinks that like, um, crap just falls from the sky, but no, it's so uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like, I love that because I think that's uh, I I that's probably one of the highlights. Like, what if I would have turned around? What if I would have quit? To be able to see the gifts around us, because so many people struggle. Give COVID. Let's just say so many people are struggling trying to find the good, like big time. So what what is it when we can turn? these experiences into lessons to fuel us instead of halt us how can we be better how can we continue to show up right how can we just keep going and not turn around <laughs> right oh i love it i know oh. okay i want to talk about um protecting your energy oh. so now, that got, now that we talked about all that stuff of like kind of a little bit of your path um how you've gotten into the mindset of creation and leadership and never settling for mediocrity and average because that freaking sucks how do you stay there like how do you keep being the one with energy the one that's positive the one that is the light for a bazillion people Speak yes to yes so protecting your energy like that is something too that i have learned so that is something that you don't necessarily just know that you need to do that you have to learn and where did i learn that i probably read it in a book or listened to a podcast and had to read it in several different books or hear somebody talk about it and that is something that i do uh 
I would can say that I do that very well, protecting my energy mm -hmm. because, um, with our businesses, I have to have the energy to give and I have to make sure that my cup is full because that's the business that I'm in by choice because that's what I love. Mm -hmm. I love relationships with people. I love motivating. I love that stuff. And I also know that with that, that can be a drain on your energy. So you have to protect your energy. And what does that look like? Like you hear people like say, protect your energy. What the heck does that even mean? Well, for one thing, one of the main things is that you, you have to be really mindful of who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. because I don't know if you've read, um, the energy bus. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And the energy givers and the energy suckers, you know, the vampires or whatever. And once you start working on yourself and noticing your energy and just are more aware, you quickly realize who and what sucks your energy. And that does not serve you. And is some of that hard to do and, and setting boundaries because sometimes <laughs> I'll just be real. It's people that, that could be close to you that are your energy suckers. Yep. And not always can you cut those people out, out of your life. Like some people might be thinking like, Oh my gosh, like my friend Jill is like, a negative Nelly, you know, that's like an easy one to recognize. And, and right. maybe you can, um, cut them out of your life or really set the boundaries. But sometimes it might be family or it might be really close friends. And you really just have to be mindful of that because I get a lot of people that just want to have coffee or have me like motivate them when I know at the end of that, that's going to be a skid for me. Mm -hmm. and, and you so have to say no. So I say no. So I say no. Or, or, or if I get asked to do things, um, I say no, because I know for myself, I have to protect my energy and myself and my self care and yep. cup. And that is a hard thing to do because I like to help people. And that's a, that's a part of my, um, just personality per se, but it's been one of the best things that I've done for myself. Do you feel like, um, and maybe you don't as much anymore because we, the more we do this once again, the more we train ourselves to do it, the better we get at it. When was it a sacrifice? Was it ever a sacrifice? Like, okay, I need to sacrifice this for that, this for that. Um, and did it ever not feel good? Sacrifice, I'm not so sure because I probably never put it in that term in my one or the other. But has it ever been hard? Yes. Yeah. Because it's just had to shift. You know, some things just have to shift. And if something isn't serving you, mm -hmm. and if it isn't leading you to your ultimate goal, for myself, I don't do it anymore. Yep. And I would say to add on to not serving you, I think everything serves us. It just depends on what you're serving. Are you serving the ego part of you, the insecure part of you, or are you serving the, the growth expansive part of you? Because it's definitely serving something or we wouldn't continue to do it. But then to figure out, right, what's that insecurity? Where's that trauma? Maybe when you were in third grade and your math teacher told you you sucked at math, and you want to actually be an engineer, but you have this little thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? So that mindset's totally serving you, but it's not serving you in the way that you want to actually progress. I always talk about happiness being um, not how you feel, but no, well, yes, of course, but knowing that you're progressing towards a better version of you and that you're giving that version to other people who want that, right? That progress towards purpose and towards meaning. And when we don't have progress, which I would consider circle of influence, making decisions to protect your energy, all these things when we're not progressing with the people that are serving our highest need 
we're, we're not going to move. We're going to be in quicksand. We're going to run up against that wall over and over and over and wondering what's wrong, right? Right. And when there's not progress, it just, it sets everything back, whether you consciously realize that or not. And you know, with like, with protecting your energy and like your circle of influence, and this is a, this is something that I have learned, you know, I have a crystal clear vision of what I want my life to look like. It's looking like that. And I, and I want more of I want more of that and I want to help more people, you know, find that. But then you need to take you, meaning like the person, me, I'll just use, you know, myself. I need to take responsibility of the energies that are around me that are going to help me get to that. And it's not like a arrogant thing or like a, um, you know, like a self-serving thing. It's just. Mm-hmm. You have to put people around you that are going to help you be your best. Like I was listening to um, Joel Osteen. Is it Osteen or Austin? I don't yep. know if you ever listened to him. Yep. And I was listening to him in the car on the ride home last night. And one of his things was, um, are the people around you, around you helping you get better? Like yeah. is the energy around you helping you get better? If it's not, he was very like, out they go. And it's like... <laughs> you know, it's not very easy at the front. It's like, oh, I know that person at work is like super negative, but I feel bad if I don't go walk by their cubicle and like say hi, even though I know they're gonna say, "Well, it's so humid out today that my hair is all fuzzy" or whatever. You know, well then it's like you're trying so hard to like keep your vibe high. It's hard to not walk by their cubicle. I understand the hard of that. Totally. Now. Then you got to be aware, though, of how long that interaction, that 10 second interaction, how long it took for you to get over that and to change your energy because your energy wasn't protected going in there because you were more concerned with disappointing them than you. Hello. (laughs) Like, what? Why? Why do we sacrifice ourselves? Why why do we do that? I mean, that. uh Yes, I know it's hard, but man, on the other side of it, it feels so freaking good to set a boundary. <laughs> yes. And, and it's okay to have the boundaries. Like it's okay. And once you do it, you realize like, oh, this just feels so much better on my heart and my mind. Mm-hmm. And you just feel better. And sometimes I don't know if it's society or like what puts it that if you do protect your energy, that that's a selfish act, but it's not, it's not. And it just allows you to show up better in your life for your family, for your kids, for your friends, whatever. Yeah. And that's important. Oh, protecting your energy is so, mm. I know I was just talking to um, my mentor chiropractors and, um, we were talking about a, a, a difficult couple, right? I mean, we run into how many hundreds of people adjust every week and, and you just need to um, talk about protecting your energy, not only beginning while adjusting, but at the end, like at the end of every day, I call it fairy dust. Everyone leaves their fairy dust, p- particles of their energy in your space. So I have this space that needs to be tended to like there's lots of people's fairy dust everywhere that needs to get out and protecting my energy also means that if I'm not careful, I take on their energy. And so one of the visualizations that I did with her was imagine, because as we start to set boundaries and as we start to protect our energy, we are way more aware when we didn't protect it, right? When that feeling of like, Ooh, whoops. I missed that one. Totally obvious. It, totally it obvious. Right in the face. <laughs> and so I was talking, this was, you know, in regards to adjusting people, especially if you're s- still adjusting people because you, can, you can't stop. But what happens when you feel them in you a little bit is just to visualize a zipper. So you go from your feet and you just zip yourself all the way up. And that act of 
protecting yourself from them. It does not mean you don't have energy interaction, but what that means is you're not taking their stuff to be mm -hmm. yours anymore. And you can separate. I think of the people that struggle in big groups of people. This would be a perfect exercise. Before you walk in that house party or before you're at an isogenic seminar and you get overwhelmed because there's tens of thousands of people in this big auditorium, you don't know anybody and you know, all the things start happening is like zip your energy up. You got, you got to zip it up because at this moment you need everything for you. You, you, you can't worry about how this person feels and, and what's happening over here. But when I keep my energy for me, I'm going to be so much better, not only for me, but for, everyone else versus an open zippered costume <laughs> free for all and then pretty soon you get home and you're like oh my gosh what happened i feel like a train ran over me right like the more aware you are the more you practice the more you train your mind the more you train your body you know it right away that's the key that is the key and that that zipper example is really good i'm going to use that because and the other thing too is like when you can feel yourself shifting a little like ooh my energy's getting funny that is where i definitely practice like changing the state well, how do you practice changing your state like if you're at a house party do you just go do burpees well <laughs> <laughs> that does you no know? So many people. People, I'll just tell them like do 10 jumping jacks. That'll create, that'll completely change your state. But how, what are your change state tactics? Well, my change of state tactics and I have, you know, I work from home alone, like, uh, you know, during the day. So I have free reign to do all sorts of weird things and no one's around, <laughs> but like definitely like I turn up the music and dance around or move around or do the jumping jacks or whatever just like do a little hot lap around the house and everybody thinks that that's completely insane but it is such like if your feet can like leave the ground even if you just jump like twice even if you can fit just like a piece of paper underneath it that will change your state or even doing you know the power pose Yep. And just standing there with your hands on your hips and you are taking some big breaths in and you are just like and you are breathing it out and you are just like power pose and like feel it like that changes the state and like i have to do that or or like here's an example we'll be getting ready for class this is when we were at the studio and so like if we're cleaning you know so you're down on the ground and you're like hands and knees like cleaning you know washing the floor i mean that isn't exactly in the state to teach a class you know you know you're like down on the ground and then it's like and not that my energy was sucked but i might be here and i know that i need to be here i mean i'm showing a video and this is on you know just audio but you need to go from point a to point b and b is higher like I will put the music on and I will change my state to a higher level. Like not, not because I was, that it got sucked from the cleaning. Right. But sometimes you need to show up at a different level and you have to change your state and show up in a different way. Like before our team calls, like I get myself in a different state on Sunday nights, not yep. that I'm in a bad one. So it doesn't always have to be from a bad experience that sucked you, but you might need to show up in a different way. Yeah. So like before our team calls, like I'm doing a lot of like clapping and like, woo, you know, whatever. And I got the music on and I feel different. Totally. I think the difference between my work from home creation mode leadership in a way different way versus my drive to work is intentional. Totally. So, and, and I can now move into work and I can transition right in the beginning. I needed to take a lot more time to figure out how to change my state or in a bad experience or somebody shared a terrible story with me after I adjusted them, right? Like something sad. I need to be able in like seriously 20 seconds shift to shift. And it doesn't happen right away in 20 seconds. It happens in five minutes or an hour or sometimes two days before, but then, you know, all right, I'm aware that something's way, way off when did this actually happen right 
go, let's do a little reflection exercise. And we know that, oh shit, that was a week ago and I didn't handle it. So now we got low vibe, low vibe. We got low energy for one whole week before we even recognize that we aren't serving people where we know we need to be serving them. Right. And recognizing it gets easier and changing it gets easier. And all of that stuff, like people think that like this stuff just like, what are you guys even talking about? Changing your state? Like whatever. Well, that's how I felt when I first started. I'm like, what now? And then it's like, you get out the book and you read and then you're like, well, I guess I'll turn some music on and practice and see what this is. And then you do it again. And then you do it, you know, the stuff just comes from, but now I can just recognize it myself in a second when I'm vibing low. I can just recognize it. I can just feel it. I just know it. But that comes with practice and that's an evolution. And I think people um, uh, cut themselves too short. That isn't the right saying, but they, you know, if it doesn't happen instantly. Oh yeah, instant gratification, my gosh. What? Right. So many people, say, <laughs> just last week somebody said, God, if only I could win the lottery. I'm like, what the hell? You wouldn't even appreciate the money you got because you didn't use your gifts and your purpose and your passion to get it. That's one silly, dumb example, but it's everything. If you don't put in the work to create a stronger state more frequently, you're not going to appreciate it. You no, And you won't be ready for it. You won't be ready for it. Like, you know, you, if we all got what we wanted to get right now without the growth, you, you wouldn't be ready for it. And that's why it's not coming. And the growth work is just so, it's completely changed my life. Yeah. It's God. completely changed my life. Like that is just like the biggest gift that I want to pass on to other people is like, hang in there and do the work yeah. because it's worth it. Yeah. And it just is one small step at a time make a list of what you're most passionate about. And you know, when you talk to people and they say, yeah, you know, I got to work, let's see, Friday till five and, uh, but then I'm going fishing. Okay. And then everything changes their, their eyes light up or whatever, or things that really bring them passion. Like I think that we don't do those things enough and really like look at what you want to do or or write down what your passions are and then write down like what you really like to do like maybe you want to be able to like run a mile or maybe you want to be able to start your own business write that down and then go do it totally go do it go figure out a way where you can fish more or go figure out a way where, how are you going to be able to run a mile? Well, you're going to probably have to run half a block at a time and then walk and then half a block at a time. Like people like have all these things inside that fire them up and no one does anything about it. And it's not easy, but like, I truly believe like, I truly believe that people can do anything that they want or make any change that they want. I believe that. I mean, I, I believe that. I mean, are we all going to like go to the Olympics? You know, now at my age, you know, I'm probably not going to be an Olympian. I mean, I get that, that can't, yeah. but like, Anything is possible. Oh, I totally it is. I mean, maybe go being in the Olympics is possible. I don't know. Maybe that was like a bad example. I really think anything is possible. And I just like, that's what I strongly encourage people to work on is like their belief, their belief that these things that light a fire in their gut can truly happen. I love that. I'm sorry. I'm writing a note. No, that's so, mm, gosh, people can do anything they want. They just got to get over themselves and go do it. Gosh, I know. And I, you know, I think that the more people you mentor and the more people you see, the more people you can see their heart and their ability and their, I don't mean to say potential in the, this negative word that they're not fulfilling that, but God, right. You just need to believe you can do it. You need to have the hope that it's possible and then just start. Action, messy, all 
brutal action. Just, it's like ugly. It's like not good. It's so bad, but you got to just keep doing it. <laughs> Do the bad actions because you get better. Totally. And just do it. Oh, it's just action. It is. It's having the belief. <laughs> get the belief first and now just take that one baby step, man. And and then put your blinders on every now and then. You know, I don't talk about perspective with blinders very often. It's a little bit of a dichotomy, but you know what? When it's time to work on yourself, you sometimes that's the only way you can do it is oh. put those blinders on and just know, hey, this is my path and nobody's gonna stop me right here. I am. Um, I'm going, I don't care what you say, do and think about this because I am worth it. So. Amen. Ah, we could do this for a long time, my friend. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so good. I appreciate oh. you having me on so much. I appreciate you. I can't wait to show my people what, how you've been mentoring your people. So. Yes. So good. Iron sharpens iron, my friend. Yes, yes. Talk about surrounding yourself with good people. Thank you for asking me because you're one of them. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes, for sure. Thank you for listening and following the Align Life podcast with Dr. Tiffany. If you love this and can think of anyone who needs to hear about it, would you mind sharing with them? Find me online at drtiffanyjohnson.com where you can find out more about my memberships, courses, mentoring, and any upcoming events. To learn more about chiropractic for you and your family, go to htchiro.com and follow our social pages. I can't wait to connect with you soon. And until then, be you, be aligned.